Hey everybody, I'm Chris Farr, uh, the head of the saxophone department uh, here at the University of the Arts. I'm also an endorser and clinician of Andreas Eastman saxophone. Um, there's a bunch of you the YouTube clips I already have up if you guys just search Chris Farr saxophone or Andreas Eastman Chris Farr or you know, so you can check them out. Um, I'm going to first play uh, a tune entitled Star Eyes. So, and then uh, we'll get into my lesson. Cool. <laughs> I'm used to that, finishing the tune and nothing happening, so we're good with that. <laughs> no, but um, my lesson today is going to be um, something that I worked hard on being a saxophone player. Uh, when we first, when I first started learning to improvise, I would look at a set of chord changes and I would see a chord like F major seven, and naturally the first note I want to play, because it's the only information I really knew, was F. And when you really start diving into improvisation and the great soloist, um, very rarely do they start or end a phrase on do. 
you know what I mean, or the root, or F in that case. So an exercise that I did was being able to locate the third and the seventh, and then eventually nines and other chord tones uh, right off the bat, right out of, right out of the gate. And it's, it took time slowly, and then I build up reaction time fast. So um, I will use the rhythm section for this, but first, it's a very mathematical exercise to just be able to say in your head, F major, you know, and then say, okay, what's the third and seventh? And be able to like quickly say, A, E, A, E. And in this tune, I'm gonna talk in my key for right now for the saxophone players. Um, this tune we're doing in uh, Star Eyes, we're doing in F. So the first bar is F major. So I need to be right out of the gate, be able to say A, E, A, E for the first bar. As soon as I get to the second bar, I have G minor seven, C seven. So I need to be able to real quick on G minor seven be able to say B flat F, and on C seven E B flat. Okay, I'm doing it in order of three to seven. So for some of you, that might actually just that much might prove to be challenging. The way to really check yourself is be able to do it in time. Put a metronome on, and just slowly say if I was going through that tune, I go. A, E, B flat, F, E, B flat, okay? You need to be able to do it that fast because this all happens in time. And um, I mentioned this in improv class the other, the other day. We are instant composers as, as improvisers. We, um, we don't have the luxury like composers might have two months time to make two minutes worth of music. We make two minutes worth of music in two minutes time. So we have to have that stuff, that kind of stuff right at our fingertips, okay? So first, maybe we could just vamp on uh, concert E flat major for a bar in the same groove, and then the next bar, F minor seven, B flat. Before I do ask them to do that in time, check yourself, everybody. For me, it's F major, G minor seven, C seven. Check yourself just out of time. Make sure you can play 3 7 on every chord. So the first bar will sound like this. The next bar will sound like this. Now, for those of you who are familiar with it, you're already going to hear the changes go by in a little hipper way than playing the root. All right? So let's just vamp on that slow. Just E flat major for a full bar, F minor 7, 2 beats, B flat 7 for 2 beats. And back, just concert. leave that. Yep, concert. One, two, three. <laughs> going three some the first time I I'm treated as one chord in the second bar but the other times after that I did the two and five now if you flip those now I'm gonna do seven three seven three this might not seem like you're practicing improvise and you, because you're not really improvising but you are installing what I call installing sounds installing reaction time and options for yourself okay so I'm gonna flip it it's gonna be seven three Seven three seven three. One, two, three. <laughs> you're hearing the changes go by and if I add some hipper rhythm to it I'm starting to solo and I, that's called internal voice leading now if you wrote all those notes down on the page you're gonna find out that there's hipper voice leading than what I'm playing what I mean by voice leading is that this note the next note my next option is closer than I think all right so maybe on the first bar I'll play three seven <laughs> And then on the second bar, wow, I found myself on that concert E flat, my F. That is the seven of the next chord. So on the first bar, I'll play three, seven. Wow, I hear this chord, and it's real close together. Okay, let's just try that. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Man, you're, you're real.
real close to some good notes. Once you get three to seven, I'll go with just a little bit further in this lesson. Let's add nines. Let's add nines to this sound because nine is such a great, and what we call, a lot of people might call the first or second color tone, meaning it really starts to have some other colors to the chord. So check this out. If I play this little matrix of three, seven, nine on every chord, and I'm not going to play any alterations. I'm just playing a three, a natural nine, and a natural seven on each chord. That's the first. That's the first chord. The next chord will be. It's kind of beautiful, actually. It kind of makes so. Let's do that real quick. I'll play three, nine, seven, and hope I don't screw it up. One, two, and three, four. just start mixing up the order of those notes, you're going to sound really inside the tune. Maybe might be my first bar. Uh, you're real close to some good notes. And now the most important thing is that you're picking other notes as your starting points or your destinations for the end of your lines. So hopefully that'll help you uh, kind of get into some more internal voice leading. All right, thanks.